you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask you to turn to the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 9, and while you're turning there, uh, remember our sister churches uh, that's close to us, the Church of Julian and the churches at Clarksville. Uh, I'm sure uh, they need prayer as well. Gospel of Mark chapter 9, and we're going to be beginning in verse 19. Mark chapter 9 Beginning in 19, the Bible says, He answereth him, and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How, how long shall I suffer with you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the Spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. And he asked his father, How long ago is it since this came unto him? And he said of a child, and oft times it had cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus saith unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Mm -hmm. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said, and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried, and rent him sore, and came out of him, and he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, and lifted him up, and he arose. And when, he was and when he was come unto the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast him out? And he said unto them, This kind come forth by, by, by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all that you do for us. We thank you for a nice place to meet out of the weather this morning. We praise you for that. God, we pray for each and every one that's here this morning, Lord, that you would uh, meet with us, that you would nurture their hearts, Lord. In the days that we live, we pray that we would be strengthened instead of weakened. We pray these things in the sweet and the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Now, uh, I'll be preaching this morning on uh, we need more faith. And seemingly recently, the Lord has brought me back time and time again uh, to what our faith is about and how much we have and how much we lack and really what is the best thing that we can look at to measure faith, to see what our faith is really about. Uh, first of all, I would have to say it must be a self-measurement because nobody can go around and say, well, uh, she's, pretty, she's pretty good, uh, he's running on the empty. Uh, and a measure other people's faith, you have to measure it yourself. You have to give that some, some, some sincere thought because faith is needed. All in all, especially in the New Testament, time and time again, Faith is emphasized. Do you have faith? And uh, I believe it were, and I still believe it today, if we had faith, we could move mountains. What's in the way of missionaries today is a lack of faith. What is in the way of churches growing is a lack of faith. What is in the way of divine healing is the lack of faith. And I have that uh, I, I, I have no doubt that that is the case. So <clears throat> we'll see the thing that presents itself, and there's always some kind of present, presentation of a problem or an issue in your life that measures your faith. Now, if you're not well stocked, when that comes up, you will cave in. There's no question about it. Uh, we cannot handle a spiritual challenge without spiritual faith. It's just like you can't handle an illness that comes your way. If your health is already poor, it's likely to get you. And in the very same way, if we are lacking faith, when something comes to challenge our faith, 
then oftentimes this is the result we'll find. Now, what had come up to here, and I didn't read it really for time's sake this morning, uh, the apostles were about casting out devils. Now, they had this gift. Uh, I think we have a gift of praying that they'll be cast out. And I'll, I'll point out some things about demonic possession as we go through this. But I want you to see that that was a, a work the apostles were assigned to do. Yeah, he said, when he picked the 12 out, he says, go, uh, go preach, teach, casting out devils in my name. And that was, that was an assignment. And, you know, uh, it, it seems pretty extraordinary that, uh, that they would be given such what we would perceive, especially in our faithless age, such a great task as part of their routine ministry was to cast out devils. And they were to follow up with it. So they come to this situation, and it was one which challenged their faith. It challenged their ability. The other 12 had tried to cast it out and couldn't make any progress. You know what? I've been in situations seemingly like that, and thing as, as a in things say, uh, and, and I'll say this before I make that statement, prayer is not simple, but in things seemingly as simple as prayer, making no progress at all, that is a faith thing. And they had this terrible demon that none of them could do nothing with, and he and they bring it to Jesus. Now, at least they had sense enough to bring their problems and cast them on the Lord, and that's exactly what they do. So with all that said, and they, had been, and they brought it to the Lord, he answereth him and said, O oh, faithless generation, no faith. Uh, the very reason they could not do it was they did not have enough faith. Now, what, what is the hindrances in the modern day uh, I don't think they changed, and, and, and sometimes it's a little scary to me when he calls them a faithless generation, and here we are 2,100 years later, what are we? Well, you know, if they were faithless, what are we? Where, where do we fit in that? And so I want you to see sometimes our core spiritual problems is our faith. Some of the very base problems we experience is our level, our lack of faith. The reason we don't enjoy life, we lack faith. The reason we don't see uh, new things coming our way, we lack faith. The reason the church doesn't progress, we lack faith. And so he, he called them a faithless generation. Then he asked them a couple of questions. How long shall I be with you? Now, if you remember, he, they come to him and said, we're going to have to get you to cast this one out. We can't help you. Uh, we can't do it. We need your help. Well, and, and he was right on home. I'm not going to be here always. I'm, I, I am leaving. I already told you I'm going back to the Father. What will you do then? That, that was the real question. Jesus knew himself he was going to depart. You won't always be able to run to me. What is your faith? What are you, what are you going to do concerning this level of faith? So he calls them faithless. He says, uh, you, better, you better get better because I'm not always going to be here. And then he says, how long shall I suffer you? How long am I going to have to endure this? Now, um, you ever think that your level of faith is a suffrage to the Lord? Here we are, and now the Lord is at the right hand of the Father, and we're here. And, and does he ever get troubled by our level of faith or our lack of faith? Now, his character hasn't changed so sometimes he has to look at us and say, what are, you know, what is their idea? What are they doing? How is the strangeness? Where are they at? Where is their faith? He's got to, he's got to have the same perception as he did then, is the level of our faith. And again, the, the hard thing to do is to honestly measure your own faith. 
Then lastly, he says, bring him to me. Yeah, you, you, you give up. You don't have the faith that it, that it even can be done. Just bring him to me. And they did that. Uh, verse 20, and they brought him unto him, and he saw him, meaning the boy saw the Lord Jesus, and straight, straightway the spirit tear him. Now, if you follow through all the uh, demonic possessions and the, and the demons, the devil's being cast out during the life of Christ, I want you to see as soon as they get near his holiness, they always have reaction. You, you ever seen anybody that seemingly, just as soon as they got around the Lord's people or the Lord's house, immediately there was a foul spirit about them? That's a response to holiness. And as soon as this demon got around, this demon-possessed child got around the Lord, he had one of these episodes, he had a response to the Lord's holiness, being in that holy environment. Now, I also want you to, uh, I also want to point out that we're just dealing with a child. And that is a very, very scary thought. That truly, even today, Children are demonically possessed. And, and you know what? We very much need to realize that. And when we see some of the stuff that goes on in this crazy world around us, people my age in their 40s and 50s, never been saved. And you know, some of them, remember Mary, Mary Magdalene? I'm not certain how old she was. Uh, she was probably in her mid-30s or older. She'd had those seven demons the entirety of, their, of her life. And they were still there. They were still... Uh, impacting her life. And so we see that uh, we need to be very cautious what we expose our children to, even, even putting the likelihood of demonic possession greater. In other words, they don't need to be exposed to this world's music. They don't need to be exposed to this world's clothing. They don't need to be written off. That's just their age. They need very strict very realistic uh, parameters. And so this boy, uh, immediately his reaction being toward the goodness of Christ was to have uh, this event. And uh, he, uh, he, uh, he fell out. Verse 21, and he, meaning Christ, asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said of a child, Again, very, very real, very, uh, very, to me, very scary thoughts that a child truly can be demonically possessed. And I, it's, I personally believe I've seen it. But I, uh, I want you to see that uh, we as Baptist people, often we, we write that off to an apostolic teaching. That is not an apostolic teaching. That is real. That is a real thing. Demonic possession is, it, it still happens today all the time. And often we write it off to mental illness. And then uh, notice the, the impact on the life of the child that is demonically possessed. And oftentimes it, meaning the foul spirit, hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. Now, I want you to see that this father has very intrinsic understanding uh, of demonic possession and saying, I know it, the whole goal is to destroy my son. You know what the whole goal today, even today for the devil and your family is to destroy it? That, that, that's, that's, his, that's his key class. That's what he wants to do. You know uh, what he wants for your children? He wants to own them. He wants those to be his. He wants them to be controlled by himself. That, that, that is the goal of Satan. And, and so we see, uh, must have been a very in tune, intrinsically knowledge uh, of this father because he knew exactly <laughs> what the goal was. He wants to destroy him. <coughs> and then he says, if thou canst do anything. Now, in modern English, that would have been stated a little differently. He, it almost sounds the way the old English is written that he's questioning the ability of Christ. That's not uh, what he's doing at all. What he's really saying, well, we, the way we would say today, 
I've heard you can do anything. If you can do anything, do this for me. Now, so that's the first thing when it comes to uh, knowing what your faith is about. Do you really believe Christ can do anything? That, 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 that is intrinsic to our faith because if we believe he's limited in any way, you may as well not have any faith in him. If you, don't be, if you believe there's parameters to his ability, then you really, you know what? Uh, just the way man's thinking, he doesn't deserve your faith. But if you believe there is no parameters, nothing can change him, nothing can interfere with his will, then certainly he can do it. He can do it. And, and, and so we see that the, the man says, uh, you can, if you truly can do anything, do this. Please do this. And uh, the Lord's response, and Jesus answered in verse 23, and Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Now, I want you to see the, the first part of that response from our Lord says, if thou canst believe. That means that not everyone would. That means that not everyone uh, has that possession. Not everybody has that ability. If you can believe. Now, do you really believe that is the measure of your faith, is it not? What, what can God do? What can the Lord Jesus Christ accomplish? What, what, what is his ability here and now? Now, the only thing a true believer can say is that it's limitless. There's no limit to what our Lord can do. Now, if you genuinely believe that, you'll behave as such. And if you say you do, but you really don't, that will show too. Mm -hmm. So how much do, he says, I can take care of you, boy, but can you believe? Mm -hmm. This demon is no problem, but do you believe? And, and that's, that, that was the real self-measure, and it's where we need to be at this morning, is where is our confidence in the ability of Christ? We need to know that. Because you're going to need it. And then he says in the rest of that uh, verse, all things are possible to him that believeth. Now, that, that, that's a mouthful. That, that's something modern day churches don't even comprehend. All things are possible if you believe. Do you believe that? Uh, I dare say most of us do not. Oh, we, we've well taken, well this is just how it's going to be in the modern day. We have well taken, well, I remember the good old days, but they'll never come again. Do you really believe that? You know what the Bible says concerning our Lord? I am the Lord, I change not. What, what, do you believe God is able to bring a revival in 2023? Mm -hmm. I believe He is. I don't believe His character has changed that much. I don't believe who He is has changed in any way, so I certainly believe that He can. And, uh, the possibility then is not that God can't. The possibility is hindered by our level of faith. How much do we believe that God is going to do it? And uh, he makes that abundantly plain to the boy's father. Now, again, I say this man was very intuitive, very, very in touch with who he was spiritually. Because he says, and straightway the fathers of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Now, how many of us would be willing to honestly say, yeah, I believe. This is the level of faith I have. But I know that there's this much hindrances in the way. 
Help this part. Help my unbelief. So then it becomes kind of a uh, uh, an idea between your level of belief and your uh, the level of unbelief. What what is your level of faith? Do you think he is able? I believe he is. I, I don't think the nature of the Lord has ever changed in the slightest because if it has, he, he certainly isn't who he says he is. And so this, uh, this, this man very much understood that he had a problem. And I think that we need to understand our level of faith too. And I believe if we'd be just super honest with ourselves this morning, we would find ourselves very, very much in the same condition as this man, that we need some help on the unbelief side, that, that, that we need some direction, that, we need some, that we, uh, we need some prayer. Now, I also lastly point out, and we'll go to what comes next. Uh, your children are watching you. Now, I don't know about you, but my children and my grandchildren are the most important things in the world to me. And I try to treat them as such. Uh, and that doesn't always mean patting them on the back. Sometimes it means patting them further down on the back. It doesn't mean that you don't love them, but you've got to correct them. But... <laughs> This person's child was what was in was in limbo. This this person's child, the devil had already tried to kill him numerous times. And this, you know, there couldn't be anything more important to this man than this child. And that's a time of measuring your faith. That that's a time of saying. Is it real or is it false? That's a time saying, am I going through the routine or is this real? Is this something that I can genuinely trust the Lord with? And certainly he had to. Hmm. Verse uh, 25. And Jesus saw the people came running together and he rebuked the foul spirit saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more un in unto him. Now, I want you to uh, see two things. First of all, our Lord Jesus Christ has dominion and authority above all other spiritual creatures, the demons, the fallen angels. He has, he has ability far above that. And then also I want you to see uh, that he says, enter no more unto him. Now, that means he was going and coming. You know, you ever been around someone, sometimes they'd be so pleasant, and the next time they're so mean and foul-spirited that, you, you know, that, that's a devil that's coming and going and entering and leaving and moving about. That, that's the reality and, uh, of, and, and the danger of any lost person there is. Uh, people, huh, people can fool you, and sometimes they have lots of help in doing it. And, and, and so we see that this, this devil, uh, huh, he not only cast him out, but said, he's sealed, you can't come into him anymore. Verse 26, and the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him, and he, and he was one and he was as one dead, insomuch that many says he is dead. But Jesus took him up by the hand, lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast him out? And he said, uh, and he said unto them, This kind or type, this this type of demon come forth by, but by nothing but by prayer and fasting. So then we find two more items that will increase our faith, and that is prayer and fasting. Even, even the world in the modern day acknowledges the, benef the health benefits of fasting, that you don't control, uh, the food doesn't control you, you control the food. 
Uh, and often we have it the other way around, do we not? And, and, and so we see that one thing that's going to build your faith up is prayer and fasting. Just time alone with the Lord. Just time where you and the Lord, uh, not only you talk to Him, but He talks to you. That, 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 that will build and buoy your faith and make you stronger in the Lord. And uh, when you're faced with something like that, your faith will be stronger. It, it, will, be, it will be more ready. Now, I'm going to make this comment. We're going to go to one last place. But you remember the apostolic gifts. And really in Mark's gospel, it also is included in the commission. And I'm, a, the, I'm assuming it was a commission to the apostles. He said, if any man, he, he told them to take up snakes. Now, we don't like to talk about that because we're that Baptist and we're not Pentecostal. But what was all that about? Why, why was that such a captivating thing? Now, most people, I have an, a, probably an unreasonable fear of snakes. I, I, I don't like them. I don't even like the good ones. And I never quite understood even that. They're fearful, are they not? They, they put you in a situation. And then when you get into the southern states and you think about the, the Rattlers, and you think about the water moccasins, and you think about the copperheads, and the snakes that literally will take your life. How could you possibly pick one up? By faith. You know, remember in, uh, in, the, uh, in, in Moses' journey uh, to the promised land, one thing that happened to them because of their unbelief is God sent a, a swarm of snakes among them to take out the whole children uh, of Israel. And, and the remedy was to create an image of the snake and, and, and put it up on the bar, and everyone that looked at it lived. Now, with that said, they're the very image of sin. When, when the serpent approached Eve, the very image of sin... So that's the reason he said take up the serpent. We have the ability with faith to face the very image of sin. We have the ability to live in victory over that if we have faith. And when we're approached by him, if we have faith, if our faith is where we need it to be, certainly we can come out as victorious people. Now the reason we don't, just like he began this, because of your faith. Because, because of where you stand out. You're, you're weak in your faith. You're anemic and low and need help in the faith department. Now, last place I want to read. In the book of Galatians. Now, Galatians chapter 5, very familiar verses of Scripture. Uh, the Bible uh, has this letter going to the churches of Galatia, more than one. Uh, sometimes how uh, associational churches validate that they can, in fact, have an association. That doesn't mean anything. It means that they were sharing the same letter. Uh, nothing more in-depth than that. But in sharing the letter, and we don't know how many churches of Galatia there were, but we know they each had a consistent problem. And one of them was this. They were missing fruits of the Spirit across the board in every group that met. There was a problem in that they were missing something out of their spiritual life. Galatians chapter 5 and uh, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Now you all know, I kind of believe, I, I, I believe that these are, are uh one builds upon the other. They're sequential. That the, you, you're not just overwhelmed with them the moment you're saved. But the first, the first one is love. And again, it's like your faith. I have no, I have no, no idea to wonder about what level of love and compassion you possess. But I will say this: it is far different in everyone than 50 years ago when I was a boy. People don't want to help people like they did then. 
People are not interested. I remember, I remember this very, very clearly. Uh, when my great grandmother died, people walking to the house with their food because a lot of people didn't even have cars, and they did that why? Because they had compassion. They were interested. They they knew everyone loved her, and her children were grieving, and it drove them to do something. What is that? It's love. It's compassion. And so uh, the first fruit of the Spirit, then, is love, joy. Most people are running on empty when it comes to joy. It looks like someone slapped them half the time, and they don't know what their next day of encouragement is going to be. They love, joy, peace. How's your peace this morning? It's a reflection of your faith. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, very few gentle people left, goodness, faith. Now, I want you to see that sixth in line is your faith. How, how, how does faith grow? It goes by prayer, study, and experience. Until you suffer something, there's no test of your faith. But when you do, how will you come out? And then the first test may be something extremely simple, such as you wanted, you wanted, uh, you wanted steak and you ended up with burgers. But the next time, it may be a sick child. It may be the death of a parent. And so your faith is going to build if you stay close unto Christ. And again, I'll say this, nobody can look at me and say, man, Larry's a man full of faith. But you can look at me when the times get tough and you will find out. Because you do one or two things. You'll say, forget about it, I'm done or it will drive you unto Christ like you never have before. And if you have faith, it will.